Okay. Um, thank you all for coming, uh, for being a part of our dual enrollment uh, informational session. This is something that we try to do annually um, to provide information to our students and to our parents about dual enrollment. We know that, you know, sometimes, especially from one year to the next, there may be changes, there may be things that um, they may have had to tweak and we just want to make sure that we're doing uh, a good job of keeping our students and our parents um, up to date with dual enrollment. And so tonight, I do apologize, I don't have an official um, agenda, but I really just wanted this to be a talking session. And so we do have a representative from Central Georgia's Technical College and also Middle Georgia State University. And then we also have a representative from Hutchings College and Career Academy. And uh, they will explain to you the differences, even though they're two different, um, I don't wanna to get too technical, but two different governing agencies with the technical college system side and the uh, Georgia region side. A lot of the uh, dual enrollment requirements, some of them do overlap, but then some of them are different as well. So I wanted to give them an opportunity to just talk with you about the differences and the requirements for uh, each program. And then Ms. Scott will share information about the programs at Hutchings College and Career Academy uh, and, and just give you updates with that. So again, thank you all for being here. And this, uh, this session is being recorded. So I will make sure that I share this with the high school counselors so they can uh, share this information with their, with their students as well. And so Ms. Scott, I am going to turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Dr. Stewart. So good evening, everyone. Um, we're gonna just start this off by taking a look inside of the HCCA experience. So a lot of people um, don't really know about us even though we are kind of a space where all the schools meet. So we are Hutchings College and Career Academy. We're located on Anthony Road. And our main goal is to make sure students are aware of the career options that are available to them, whether they just to go straight into their careers out of high school or they decide to go to college and then go into their careers. We want to make sure that they are prepared. So let's take a look inside of the HCCA experience. Innovative, groundbreaking, life-changing, rewarding. Words to help describe but they can't replace the experience that you will gain as a student at Hutchings College and Career Academy. At Hutchings, you'll enter a world of possibilities while earning credentials to help pave the way to your future success. In partnership with the Bibb County School District and Central Georgia Technical College, Hutchings College and Career Academy offers students the following career pathways. Aircraft structural maintenance, audio, video, and film, automotive, banking, barbering, construction, cosmetology, culinary, cybersecurity, diesel equipment maintenance, MT, graphic design, healthcare, hospitality, industrial systems and technology, teaching, welding, as well as college academics for English, math, and Spanish. Hutchings is training the future generation of professionals by allowing students to enhance and practice employability skills to have a unique community and classroom experience that sparks innovation and creativity with the use of technology, all while developing their professional resume, obtaining certifications, and high school and college credit. What are your goals after high school? Maximize your potential and capitalize on your interests. Pursue college and career readiness with William S. Hutchings College and Career Charter Academy today. All right, so what if I told you that this was in your backyard? What if I told you that this is down the street from your house? So this is not an opportunity that you have to, um, you know, wait a lifetime for. If you guys are in the 10th through the 12th grade or you're rising 10th through 12th grader, this is an opportunity that you can take advantage of and we will provide transportation and everything that you need in order to participate in this experience. So I just want to quickly talk about dual enrollment. Everybody's going to talk about it tonight. So I'm going to give you just kind of an intro, okay? So most pathways are dual enrolled. That means that you can receive high school and college credit. Students are limited to 30 college credit hours. That's equivalent to one year of college. 
Steve of TCC if they successfully complete an HCCA pathway. I'm sure Ms. Gunn will go into that in detail a little bit later. Um, dual enrollment credit hours vary per pathway. Um, hope and financial aid will not be impacted unless you, your student fails the course and credits transfer to any university that accepts CGTC college credits. Um, so if you have a 10th grader who wants to do the academic courses, they have to meet the Zell Miller requirements in order to participate in those college academic classes. I'm just going to call these out one more time just so everybody is aware of what we even offer. So all of you pretty much know that when you go to your high school, you're probably going to take some type of CTA e pathway. And while they are all phenomenal, um, and e even personally, CTA e classes changed my life, um, I think that it's important that you guys realize that at Hutchings, you can get college credit and high school credit at the same time. And that's what sets us apart. So at Hutchings, we offer audio, video, film, banking, college, English, math, biology, and Spanish over the summer, cosmetology, culinary, call center customer service, that's with GEICO, that's one of our newer pathways, um, EMR, EMT, engineering, firefighter, also a new pathway, um, graphics, healthcare, hospitality, and teaching. Um, we also offer classes that are held on CGTC's campus. So these are those pathways, aircraft, automotive, barbering, construction, IST, and welding. And so this just gives, this is just broadens your horizon. So at your high school, you may have marketing or you may have, you know, those business courses, but here you get a chance to do more than just what's available in your high school and you get to go to school with other students from other high schools. So um, just to want to make sure that you guys pay attention to our newer pathways. Um, these are some of the logos for those and we will move on. Our main goal is this, that when you leave, you have something in your trunk. You are ready to be employed, you are ready to be enrolled, or you're ready to be enlisted. And so we don't want to send you on your journey and you have no idea where you're going. So we want you to be aware of what your currency is. So I told you you have 30 college credit hours. Now the question is, how will you spend them? Will you do strictly CTA e pathways or academic pathways? How are you going to spend those $30 as it relates to your future? Um, and, and what do you want to get out of your experience? Is it employability skills? Is it learning what you're good at? Is it learning your college experiences and getting exposed to, you know, more career options? Is it credits? <laughs> are you just here so you can make sure that you can kind of finish your college um, sooner than other most people and so you have to determine that and you have to determine how you want to spend them but just make sure that you're aware of all of your options so at Hutching and at these opportunities you will get a chance to multiply those credits and use up all your money beware of how you collect them because there is a limit and then make sure that you keep track of what you're collecting so that you know how to spend them on your journey when you leave so um we just want to make sure that your dream is not just a dream you had when you were in kindergarten. We want to make sure that you have the exposure, the experience, everything else that you need to be closer to your dream. And we believe that by giving you these college credits along with that hands-on experience and career experience, you'll be closer to getting there. So here are the overall benefits. You'll get three CTA e credits, one high school academic credit, and college credits as well. You can also take a three-year pathway in one year. You you um, take five classes instead of seven classes, but you get eight credits. You do the math. You're getting more for, you know, um, a, a bigger bang for your book. Career options, you get exposed to careers that you may have never even thought of just by being um, connected to those professional teachers in the industry. So just to kind of break it down, usually this is how your schedule will look. Freshman, sophomore, you take marketing one. Then you take the next class and you take the next class. At Hutchings, you take all three of them in one year and you still get that high school and college credit. And so if you choose a college track, you would just be racking up on those high school and college academic credits as well. So um, we just wanna make sure that you guys get the chance to explore, learn your employability skills, get those credits and certifications and career exposure. I'm just gonna pick one of these to focus on and that's gonna be the CNA pathway. Um, these students receive a CNA certification if they successfully complete the exam. And so that means they go into the career field ahead of their peers. So that's kind of, this is kind of what stack credentials kind of look like. So we want to at least make sure you have that, that first stack so that you can build on them over time. All right, so that means if you participate in this program, you will be ahead of people your age in the workforce because you have a level of experience that most people will not have. Um, and if we look at that, I just mentioned the CNA pathway, those students 
can go in making potential salaries around $29,640. At Geico, about $43,600. At Purdue, like at $38,000. And these are just our newer pathways, about $35,000. And then for um, Firefighter, about $35,000. So imagine you coming right out of high school, being able to go to school and possibly make this kind of money on that, um, or doing, choosing this as a career. And so you also get a chance to save time. So instead of doing things in four years, taking your academic course in four years, you can do it in less than four years. Um, the final thing is saving money. So the average cost of freshman tuition is about $9,687. Um, for private college, $35,087. And so imagine saving thousands of dollars just because you chose to maximize your experience in high school. You're gonna have to take classes anyway. Why not you know, get more of a bang for your book? And so let's just look at, you know, what would happen if you use all your academic credit hours? You could potentially save a year of college at, let's say, Fort Valley State. That's $19,098. Or one year out of Spelman, $44,740. UGA, $27,658. Mercer, y'all, $54,924. And Middle Georgia, $15,142. So you can really be saving money. And you see your parents in the background, they'll be so proud of you. You see them on that money? They, they want to save the money, okay? So just these are the last things just talking about how you apply So and how it looks. So you have two sessions, AM session 8 to 945, PM session 1215 to 2. And so your schedule is going to look like either one of these. You would come to us in the morning, go to your school in the afternoon, C go to your homeschool in the morning, eat lunch, come to us for the afternoon. We'll give you three, if you give us three of your classes, we'll give you four credits. So you also will eat lunch. You won't miss any after school activities. Transportation will be provided. So just remember, if you are a soccer player, beta club, community service, band, football or basketball, you're gonna be back in time, I promise. You get to do both. This, this was not the case when I was in high school. You couldn't do both, you had to choose, but you guys can do both. So the eligibility ranges between about 2.0 and 2.5 for our pathway. Some require testing. And here are your next steps to apply. So attend recruitment events to learn about our pathways or just go straight to the application and apply for the pathway that you're interested in. Determine your eligibility based on graduation and pathway requirements. So based on your eligibility, that's how you will be accepted. If it's a competitive pathway, we will consider your attendance, behavior, and transcript. GPA requirements range from about 2.0 to 2.5. I've already stated that. Receive notification of acceptance by mail and email. So we'll tell you where your status is. So just be looking out in the mail and in your email. And then you'll get scheduled for Hutchings. The only things that could get in the way is if you are no longer on track for graduation or if you don't have room in your schedule. So here's the link to apply. I'm also going to put it in the chat once I get finished talking. Um, but you can also use the QR code as well. So I just want to use one student to get this point across. I taught her in ninth grade at Central, and she was like, high school isn't for me. Nobody has, in my family has graduated before. Like, I'm, I'm done with this. Like, I'm going to drop out. And so we would have this conversation all the time. And I was like, you have a gift to teach. Like, you know, I'm, you're, you're teaching in my class. You should do this. And so little did I know, I moved away, and she ended up coming to Hutchings for the teaching pathway. And so... Um, she ended up graduating, and of course, that was her when she went to the military, but now she's at Savannah State College for teaching. And so not only was she the first one to graduate high school in her family, but she's the first one to go to college. And not only that, her sister was one of the REACH scholars last year, so her sister has $10,000 towards her college degree. And when she, asked, when she was asked about why, you know, um, like what was her why, and she was like, I saw my sister do this. And so you never know who you're inspiring by deciding to pursue your passions and your purpose and um, advance in your, uh, your academic career. So follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at BibHCCA. And thank you guys so much. This is my email. You can email me if you have any questions. My name is Elisha Scott, elisha.scott at bcsdk12.net. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Scott, for sharing that information uh, with the group. Uh, again, I am recording this, so I will make sure that this is shared with the high school counselor so they can forward this information and share this information with the students as well. So thank you so much.
Um, okay, Ms. Gunn, I am going to turn it over to you. So Ms. Gunn will come and speak with us about um, dual enrollment opportunities at Central Georgia Technical College and how that process works um, with their institution. Okay, good evening, y'all. Everybody hear me okay? I'm trying to make sure that I um, am sharing correctly. I'm not, I don't think I'm muted, right? Can somebody give no, me a thumbs up? Okay, yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, well, good evening, y'all. Thank you so much. Um, Ms. Scott encapsulated so much information. I'm going to go through mine quickly because a lot of it is about Hutchings, um, but some of the information is going to kind, kind of dive deep into the new rules about dual enrollment. So I'm Kim Gunn, the Director of High School Initiatives at Central Georgia Technical College. Uh, we partner closely with Bibb County Schools and Hutchings College and Career Academy. Um, we have lots of different opportunities for um, dual enrollment students. Um, this is our president, Dr. Ivan Allen, and I put his picture on here because I wanted to, to share with y'all how important he has always uh, thought dual enrollment was. So I've been with the college for um, about 12 years now, um, and back then we had a little under 300 dual enrollment students. That was back when we were middle Georgia Tech. So fast forward to this year, we had um, 2,700 students, dual enrollment students, last academic year in this fall, a little bit less at 2,200, but uh, part of that was for the cap. But I say all that to say he is fully committed and all in uh, to making these partnerships and these opportunities work for students. Um, and now dual enrollment takes up about 30% or makes up about 30% of our total enrollment. So we have a lot of our student body that is actually high school students. So why is it important? For so many different reasons, um, dual enrollment is such an amazing opportunity for the students in Georgia. And, and just like Ms. Scott, Ms. Scott said, I, I loved how she put that it's currency. You students have this ability to take advantage of this program that wasn't around, not paid for like it is when I went to high school and have so many options. There's so many things to choose from. Um, so it's, it goes to a career tech or technical, or you can do academics, or you can do both, but tuition is fully covered. So we wanna make sure that students really understand all the opportunities that are available to them. Um, and the beautiful thing, just like Ms. Scott was saying, is that transportation is provided uh, to Hutchings College and Career Academy and to all the programs that are at CGTC. So, you know, if you don't drive or don't have a car, that's not a barrier for you students. Everything is, is provided for you and worked into your high school schedule. So again, um, amazing opportunities. So um, just to kind of touch on, so dual enrollment used to be ninth through 12th grade. You can take any course that you want to. We had some big changes that, um, that went into effect this summer and we'll kind of get into those. Um, there's also a, a smaller part of dual enrollment called SB2 or option B. And that's for students who are really ready kind of to leave high school and do a different track. Um, it's an alternate diploma program for, uh, for students, but it has some pretty specific requirements. So we'll talk about those a little bit later too. So the requirements for Central Georgia Tech, you have to complete the application, which there is no application fee for our dual enrollment students. You have to submit a high school transcript and show a 2.0 or if you wanted to submit PSAT, SAT, or ACT scores. Um, we used to really rely heavily on what we call the AccuPlacer, which is a placement exam. Um, but since COVID, we haven't been able to go out and test or have students come on campus and test like we used to. So that was um, something that's kind of been waived since COVID. Um, so we're able to admit students with just the 2.0 for all programs. Um, I know that that is good through fall semester. Um, I'm not sure that it will continue on through spring, but if you're admitted for fall, then, then you would be covered by that 2.0. Here's the key to dual enrollment. We have to make sure that your counselor is gonna approve your courses. What happens is um, the student does have to apply and be accepted to the college. They also have to do a dual enrollment funding application on gafutures.org each year. 
So the good news is you only have to apply once, students. Then parents get an email and they have to go in and check certain boxes to say that they approve for their student to participate in dual enrollment. And that's just to make sure that everybody's on the same page and that everybody understands what you're signing up for. Once you do that, that covers your full tuition for your dual enrollment courses because then it's gonna go to your guidance counselor at the high school for them to approve your courses. But that's the key to making it free. And I think sometimes students just think, well, dual enrollment's covered. Well, it is, but you still have to apply for it. So we gotta make sure um, students that you, that you do that step on gafutures.org. And then the other thing um, we were talking about uh, before the call started, there is a deadline um, for dual enrollment students of May 1st. Um, we wanna make sure students that you're kind of doing your part and signing up um, before that deadline because we wanna ensure that you have a space. So please make sure that you're doing the um, application for Hutchings and or that you're applying for whatever college it is that you're hoping to go to, whether it's Central Georgia Tech or Middle Georgia State, um, before that deadline so that we can make sure that you get in and that you get covered. Um, I won't go through all the programs again because I know Ms. Scott covered this and I love the video because it gives you um, some visual about everything that we are able to offer. So all of the programs um, here on the left, that's what we offer at Hutchings, but I wasn't even thinking about next year and all of our <laughs> amazing new programs um, that we're going to be offering um, next year, the, the firefighter. Um, so everything on the left is at Hutchings, and you'll notice like culinary and nurse aid and banking and finance have a little, a slightly higher GPA. So we want to make sure students see that. Um, and then everything on the right hand side is what's taught at our uh, making campus at CGTC. Again, transportation is provided, um, but all of those courses are taught on the college campus because that's where the labs are. And then of course, criminal justice is out is at, taught at Southwest. Um, the aircraft structural technology program, we're kind of still working out um, some of the logistics of that, but um, that's going to be a, an amazing program that we're really going to push for next year, um, and that's going to actually be taught at our um, Robbins North or Boeing facility, so it's going to be taught at the airport. Again, one of those super hands-on programs where students are going to be prepared to, to be able to go into the workforce with that credential. All of our programs that you, you see on the screen, with the exception of the academic courses, earn what we call a technical certificate of credit or a TCC. And that is, Ms. Scott talked about this, stackable credentials. That is a credential that a student earns on the college side that they can roll into the diploma, that roll into the degree, but it also makes you a pathway completer on the high school side, which is of course good, um, you know, for the high school um, side of things. So we wanna make sure that you understand it's not just, it's what she talked about, it's putting things in your basket. I mean, you're gonna get college credit, high school credit, um, but you're also gonna get credentials um, from the college which can and industry certifications which can lead to your careers okay so let's talk about regs um, new regulations really quickly and I won't I won't go in too deep into this but some big changes went into effect this summer and what you need to know students is that really what the big things that changed is ninth graders can no longer qualify for dual enrollment funding doesn't say that ninth graders can't take a class, you would just have to pay for it. Um, so most opt not to. 10th graders can participate in technical only, or if they have these higher requirements, then they can participate on the academic side. So like if you're in tenth, rising 10th and you wanna do English, you would have to prove that SAT score of 1200 or ACT 26 composite, and that has to be sent and proven to Georgia Student Finance. So it's not a college requirement, it's a funding requirement. And then just remember, if you're entering 10th grade, we have a 30 credit hour cap now, which is approximately 10 classes, give or take, because most college classes are about three credit hours. So if you start burning those hours in 10th grade, 
it could be that you um, could run out by the time that you get to, to 12, which is, you know, if we plan it out right, well, you know, we want to make sure that you've got enough hours to carry you through. Um, and then 11th and 12th graders, you're eligible for anything you want to take. So you want to do academics, you want to do technical or both, you can do that. But the key is the 30 credit hour cap that applies to everybody. There was a small, um, what they called a grandfather clause, but that was for the students that were enrolled last year and they were given a little bit of extra because they were in the program when there was no cap. But for new students, everybody gets 30. Okay, one of the other really big changes was they got strict about course withdrawals and course retakes. So they no longer pay for a student. So say if you were taking a class and not doing well and um, said, hey, you know, Mr. Roger or Ms. Gunn, we need to probably go ahead and withdraw from that class. You can do that, but it won't pay for you to retake it. And if you withdraw from two classes, you are out of the program completely. It won't, you're no longer eligible for dual enrollment funding. And y'all, that's a big one. Um, because I had students this summer that, you know, for whatever reason, various reasons, they withdrew from two courses. Well, as that means they're out of the program. So they can take classes, but, but the burden falls on them to pay. Um, so for most students, of course, that just means they're out. Um, and then the new funding application, which is a little bit easier. And the good news is students, you do only have to apply once a year, but um, the, the big part is the parent approval um, in that Georgia Futures application. So what does it cover? Full enrollment funding covers your full tuition, which at Central Georgia Tech is $100 a credit hour. We wait, Central CGTC waives the fees and the book costs for all high school students. So as long as you qualify for dual enrollment funding, everything's covered. If you were to have to pay to retake a class or um, you ran out of hours and you're having to pay for that, we waive those fees and book costs too. So that kind of goes back to, you know, Dr. Allen, he is all in with dual enrollment and it's important to him. So it's still, a value even for the students that, that do have to self-pay. They put a cap of 15 hours per, sem per semester um, for students, which makes sense if the cap is 30. Um, and you can attend more than one college. So say if you wanted to go um, to Hutchings for CNA, but then you also wanted to take a class at Middle Georgia State, you can do that. Um, we just have to make sure that we watch your cap and watch your hours. Okay, why is it important? It's so many different reasons. Um, it, it's gonna give you not only the stackable credential, it's gonna give you the confidence to know as a high school student, I'm in college and I'm completing something and this is leading to something. Um, it also is gonna give you exposure to say, if you go to your high school, they don't have all of these amazing options. They have great career tech programs, and I'm not trying to discredit those at all. But Hutchings is one place where you can take the students all throughout the system can take advantage of these programs. Um, and I've seen from personal experience how it can benefit students. Um, we had one of our nurse aid students that was, I can't remember where she was, but because of the skills that she learned in her CNA program at Hutchings with Ms. Durbin, she was able to save a life at a public event. And that's from a, a 16, I'm sorry, 17 year old student. She saved someone's life from what she learned in her high school. I mean, it just amazes me. And then went on to do, um, pursue her nursing. So it, it can give you so many things and expose you to so many things and help you figure out your future. Because I don't know about you, but when I was your age, I had no clue what I wanted to do. Um, I knew kind of what I didn't want to do, but so to, to be able to learn in high school and figure out um, what your future holds is pretty amazing. So um, really quick, I wanted to mention that we have an opportunity to enrollment study abroad. So Central Georgia Tech, um, started a study abroad program for our dual enrollment students, I guess two summers ago, um, because of COVID, we weren't able to go this past summer, 
Um, but these are these are our students, and this is a real picture that's not edited of what they saw in Donegal, Ireland. Um, our students go for 10 days in the summer and they earn a humanities 1101 credit in those 10 days. And every student that went on that trip said it was 100% life changing. So um, students, if you're interested in this, we need to talk so that we can um, get you signed up for the prerequisite class um, which is English 1101 in the um, in the spring because you do have to take that class um, before you can enroll in that humanities. This has got the um, cost that's 2850 that's all inclusive that's airline room board everything and then Mr. Hutto's information there if you are interested you can email him um, of, of course you can also let Mr. Roger know and that was the other point so this picture um, is Mr. Ken Rozier. He's our high school coordinator for Bibb County. He wasn't able to be here tonight, um, so I asked if I could stand in for him um, to talk to you guys, but he is amazing with students. He's great to work with. His email address is krozier at centralgatech.edu. Um, and just a couple of important things to remember, we don't let our dual enrollment students register themselves. So everything registration has to go through Mr. Rozier. The dual enrollment students are our CGTC students. So you are invited to the basketball games, all of the functions that we have at the college, um, and we get every, all of our students' IDs made. Um, they are Central Georgia Technical College students just like anybody that's on main campus. They just happen to be um, at Hutchings. And then the other last thing that I wanted to mention is that students do have to be in good standing to participate at the college. And, and that equal, you have to have two things to be in good standing, a 2.0 grade point average at the college and a 67% pass rate. And again, that, that's where that withdrawal um, or failure can, can really hurt students. So that was a lot of information. That was kind of by part. Um, I don't know if y'all have any questions, if you wanna put that in the chat or unmute yourself, or I'll be here um, at the end as well if you, if you wanna just hold your questions for later. Thank you so much, everybody. So thank you so much, Ms. Gunn, for sharing that information. A lot of good information that the students, you know, need to know, but um, I, I just think it's just an, an awesome idea because even like Ms. Scott mentioned, you know, I didn't have those opportunities when I was going through high school. So I really do hope our students take advantage of some of these opportunities. Um, okay, so next we are going to transition to Middle Georgia State University. Ms. Andrea Blackshear, I am going to yield the floor to you so that you can share information about uh, Middle Georgia State University's dual enrollment program. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me get this. Uh oh, okay. All righty. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everybody. I am Andrea Blackshear. I'm the dual enrollment recruiter here at Middle Georgia State University. Um, Middle Georgia State University is one of the fastest growing universities in Georgia. We have five campuses plus one fully online campus. We have one campus right in the heart of Macon, in Cochran, Dublin, Eastman, and Warner Robins. Discover your passion. We have 65 plus courses of study with, um, these are just a few of the most pop more popular ones, business, nursing, psychology, IT, aviation. Aviation is one of our most, that is the most popular um, uh, major here. Thrive on campus. So dual enrollment students can get involved on campus. We encourage you all to get involved, um, join a club, do something. The only thing you cannot do is play sports and pledge a fraternity or sorority. So what is dual enrollment? So as we've heard from Ms. Gunn and Ms. Scott, dual enrollment is the opportunity to enroll in up to 30 credit hours of approved college courses for both your college and the high school. This program has now been cut to just juniors and seniors, we prefer. However, sophomores by exception, 
Um, you can enroll part-time or full-time, and you can also enroll fall, spring, and summer. And you can take classes on campus or online, whatever you choose. So these are just some of the stats from Middle Georgia State. 83% of dual enrollment courses taken in 2019 resulted in an A or B. And so these are some of the popular course options among our dual enrollment students because these courses, as you guys know, you can get credit on your high school side and on the side. So English 1101 and 1102, history, math, political science, psychology, and econ, which are the classes that majority of students need to graduate high school. So this is our course availability. You can take, you can take classes on whatever campus you choose. Um, I'm sure you guys will be taking classes on, your make, on our making campus because it's right in your backyard. So these are the requirements um, for Middle Georgia State University. Um, they are a little bit different from Hutchinson and Central Georgia Tech. Um, so you must be on track to graduate high school. You must have a 3.0 GPA. And we have, we, right now we are test optional, but I am going to go through the test scores um, because I prefer students send in test scores. So if you have a PSAT or SAT, we look for you to have a 1050 minimum with a minimum score of 480 in reading and writing and a 440 in the math section. If you've taken the ACT, we look for you to have a composite score of at least a 20 with a minimum of 17 in math and 17 English. And then we too have the Acuplacer here at Middle Georgia State with a minimum of 237 reading, 258 math, and a four right placer. We do offer the Acuplacer on all of our campuses. And right now, I think we're just limited to just the Macon and Cochrane campus with COVID, um, but we are allowing students to come on campus. However, the thing with taking the Acuplacer is you have to have been applied to Middle Georgia State. Okay, so what about during the pandemic? So with students who didn't get a chance to take the test, any test, or your test got canceled or something like that, these are the new requirements that we're having for students in that circumstance. You must still be on track to graduate. You have to still have that 3.0 GPA. However, without your test scores, we'll just evaluate your high school transcript. We'll look for you to have completed two units of English and Algebra 2 or anything equivalent to Algebra 2. Now let's say you have the two units of English, you just haven't taken that Algebra 2 yet and you're like, oh, well now I can't come. Don't get discouraged because we will still evaluate your file. Um, and if you have the two units of English completed, you can still be enrolled. However, you will not be allowed to take any math class or any classes that require a math prereq. So expenses, um, there are none really. GSFC is applied to the tuition. They cover all the tuition. We here at Middle Georgia State waive student fees and we provide textbooks. However, if you take a class that requires a lab, you will have to pay the $25 lab fee. And if you're on campus and you get a parking ticket or you have a book fine, you do have to pay those fines because we are not gonna cover that. You're a college student, you should be responsible. So how many classes can you take? So as you already heard, the dual enrollment funding cap is 30 semester credit hours and a 15 hour limit per semester. And like Ms. Gunn said, most courses are three credit hours. Students planning to enroll in more than 30 credit hours, you can, however, you'll just have to pay for it out of pocket. Um, students in the ninth and 10th grade. Now, ninth graders, you can take classes, but as you guys know, you will have to pay all your classes and your books and everything else out of pocket. 10th graders who are not funding eligible, which means they do not have those high achieving test scores, such as the 1200 SAT or the 26 ACT, you also have to pay out of pocket. Why dual enrollment? So some of the perks about dual enrollment, you can fin finish college early. Like Ms. Scott was saying, you can finish college before your friends, which is always a good thing because you can just throw it in their face. You can save money or your parents can save money. You're more prepared to start college when you do start. So AP courses versus dual enrollment. Now don't get me wrong, AP is amazing. However, AP courses prepare a student to pass a standardized test. And now if you pass that test, then you get the college credit. 
However, with dual enrollment classes, if you make a C or higher, you automatically get the high school and college credit. So let's say you finish dual enrollment here with us and you choose to not stay a Middle Georgia State University student, that is fine. Um, we do transfer to any university system of Georgia school. Um, however, with those private schools such as Spelman, Morehouse, it is a little bit harder to transfer. So you may just, if those are some of your schools that you're thinking about going to, I would just reach out to the school and make sure that you are on track to transfer classes over, as well as out-of-state schools. We like to tell students, if you plan on going out-of-state, be in contact with that school, just letting them know, hey, this is what I'm taking over here, and I just wanna make sure it'll transfer. What to expect? So as a dual enrollment student, you are treated as a traditional college student. You are a Middle Georgia State University student. A professor is not gonna know that you're in high school unless you self-identify, meaning that you sit in the class and say, hey, I'm in high school. Other than that, you're treated as a college student. So that means you have to be responsible like a college student. Dual enrollment is the start of your college transcript. So that means these grades will follow you. So it has a big impact on if you wanna to go to UGA and then they're gonna look at your transcript and say, hey, you have all these Fs or something like that. School students should expect to spend up to two to three hours of work per each hour spent in class. And I know you guys are like, uh-uh, I don't even do that in high school. This isn't high school. So be prepared. So start your application. You can start your application now, today, right now, by going to www.mga.edu. We will need your driver's license, birth certificate, or your learner's permit. You must submit an official high school transcript. That, when we say official, that means it has to come from your high school. You cannot email me a copy of it. I will not accept it that way. It has to come from your counselor. Um, submit official PSAT, SAT, ACT, or AccuPlacer scores, if you have them. And then we'll need an immunization form, which is just your shot record. Um, Ms. Gunn did talk about the completed participation agreement, which is done through Georgia Futures now. Now deadlines. It's important to know that we here at Middle Georgia State do not have deadlines. However, if the county has a deadline in place, we will stick with their deadlines. So if the deadline is May 1st, then that's the deadline for all students. And here's my contact. Like I said, I'm the dual enrollment recruiter. You can call and text that number. That is not my personal email, um, but that is the dual enrollment email and I do get those as well. So thank you guys. Let me see. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Blackshear, for sharing that information. Again, a lot of good information for you to consider if you're thinking about doing dual enrollment with a university system college or through the technical, uh, technical system. Um, so again, students, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Um, Dr. Washington, do you have any words that you want to share before we leave the meeting? Okay. Well, students, do you have any questions for either Ms. Blackshear, Ms. Scott, or Ms. Gunn? Parents as well. Hi. Um, I'm Destiny Woodard's mom. She's a student at Central. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. I had, we went to the recruitment sessions for Hutchings, and then I got with her counselor, and um, she said that her schedule um, wouldn't allow for her to do Hutchings, but maybe she can do dual enrollment over the summer to free up some things in her schedule. How would that work? Would she go like every summer if she gets in? Or how would that work? And then go to Hutchings, she'll do both? I'm not sure how. Ms. Gunn, did you want to take it or you want me to take it, the question? I was just going to say, if it's scheduling, it's probably through the counselor, but I mean, we, we have availability in the summer, so I think, I think that's definitely doable. Ms. Scott, did you want to add anything? Um, I think the only thing I would say is, um, it, it's not something she has to do every summer. She would have to sign up separately. Like, it wouldn't be a thing where it would just automatically sign her up for each summer, but she can choose which class she wants to do, take them over the summer, and then, you know, that could leave room, like the counselor mentioned. 
Okay. And thank you. And that brings up a good point. I don't know if we said that. I know um, high school students are used to registering for the year at the high school, but on the college side, um, they do have to register every semester um, when they're taking classes. So if they're coming to the college campus to take classes, you know, they would register separately for summer fall, spring. Sometimes that gets lost in translation with high school students. Um, like if they're in for fall, they just assume it rolls over for spring. Um, so that's a great point, um, you know, that she could, that she would register, you know, separately for each one of those terms. Thank you. And then the rising 10th grader. So does she need to complete 10th grade before dual enrollment? she's rising then yes ma'am if she was she would need to she could do Hutchings programs technical programs as a 10th grader but unless she had those um, high achieving 1200 SAT 26 ACT um, she wouldn't she couldn't do the academics until the summer before 11th grade okay thank you yeah yes ma'am Good evening. One thing, um, I'm, I'm sorry, just really quickly. I wanted to say this to the last parent. I also was thinking that if she couldn't do dual enrollment, she possibly could take that Spanish class because a lot of times I found that those Spanish classes are the things that kind of get in the way. I don't know if her school would be able to maybe give her an opportunity to maybe take that, you know, that Spanish class over the summer or on E2020 or something. I don't know the details of that, but what I found is it's you usually that Spanish classic that kind of makes their schedule um, not available. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm calling, well, I'm Andrew McClendon's mom and he is an IB student over at Central High School. And um, he's been talking about dual enrollment, wanting to maybe come out of IB to do something a little different. He's a rising junior. Um, and I think he has all the requirements because their regimen is, their schedule is already fixed. And he's in his second year of the, um, the foreign language. And so my question is though, what process do I need to take um, in order to make the switch for him? Do I just need to talk with his counselor at school just to let her know that he's wanting to come out of the IB program and then fill out the application for dual enrollment? Yes, that would be my recommendation is to one, make the counselor aware that, okay, he's no longer going to be a part of the IB program because he wants to do the dual enrollment. Because as you mentioned, they do the schedules early out. And so we want to make sure that uh, when August in the fall, he'll have the, the right courses uh, from day one. So there won't be a lot of changing in the fall. Um, so once the counselor is aware, they can go ahead and start making those changes and getting him to start that process of, of applying through GA Futures and making the connection with the colleges. Anything, Ms. Gunn or Ms. Scott, you all want to add? I, I was just going to um, add, and I'm, I'm not as familiar with IB, I guess, as um, AP, but I'm assuming it's similar. Yes. Um, but I, I know that there's the opportunity, I think, to do both. So if you wanted him to maybe do, you know, IB courses in, in some areas, maybe some mm -hmm. IB uh, high school science, mm -hmm. um, and then do literature at the college or, you know, I don't think you have to make a definitive choice for one or the other. I think you could do a mixture. Yep. And I think some colleges like that. They like to see both. Um, AP and IB give you rigor, give students rigor um, points, um, but dual enrollment is great too because it's guaranteed free college credit as long as they make a C or higher. Um, and I did want to mention, I forgot to earlier that CGTC, we do have um, a list of 27. Those academic courses are, for, are guaranteed to transfer anywhere uh, university system, but as Ms. Blackshear said, it, when it's private, uh, a private college, sometimes transferability can, can get tricky. Okay, all right. Which one of the programs offers the engineering track? Um, that's a Hutchings uh, program, it, but it's through Central Georgia Tech, so we're kind of, okay. we kind of come together. Um, and I was gonna say, I do realize that the IB classes sometimes are like 
you know, you have to take those particular ones. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I would try to talk to them as soon as possible because I have seen some students choose to do Hutchings over IB because it couldn't work out because they thought okay. it would be better for them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Let's see. I see a question in the chat. Let me read that. It says, um, okay, I'm a junior at Central and I wanted to take dual enrollment classes over the summer, but I was wondering if I could take them online or is it a requirement to be in person? Um, I know for Middle Georgia State University, you can choose. Um, we don't make it a requirement for dual enrollment students to meet in person. However, if you choose to take classes online, please note that is a big responsibility um, and you have to stay on your work. Nobody's going to be there telling you. To. So it's your choice. Um, the, the same for CGTC. Um, Pre-COVID, I would always recommend students to, to take classes in person, especially if it's your first college term, just so, you know, you can raise your hand and ask a question and, and the instructor can lay eyes on you. Um, but we are living in a very virtual world. Um, I think everybody offers um, a lot of online, and that's definitely an option. But if, if there's, you know, the ability for you to take it in class, um, and it fits with your schedule, especially to start in summer is also a condensed term. For us, it's 15 weeks of instruction squeezed into seven weeks, so it's super fast paced. Um, so if possible, I would say uh, take it in class, but there's no requirement either way. So if you're ready um, to do everything through what we call Blackboard, um, and that's um, perfectly fine. Thank you, thank you. And that was a great question, Tershana. Thank you so much. And so there's another, um, and she said, thank you. There's another question in the chat box. Where can we find the 65 uh, plus courses for Middle Georgia dual enrollment? Okay, so maybe that slide should be a little bit more specific. Um, it's not 65 for just dual enrollment. Um, as you know, the dual enrollment classes have to be approved by GSFC. So the 65 plus courses is for the overall college. However, for dual enrollment, you are only allowed to take what is approved. Um, so it's more, more like the, um, there are some aviation courses if you're interested in aviation, English, math, all those, core classes, I should say. <laughs> Sorry about that, Leah. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, are there any other questions for Ms. Blackshear, Ms. Scott, or Ms. Gunn, parents or students? And I think this has been great dialogue. Um, the questions were just great. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, um, if you do think of something that you, um, you know, question for later, certainly you can reach out to, um, on our district website, you'll find, or if you just go to Hutchings College and Career Academy, you can find Ms. Scott's information there. And I know she will make the connection with either Ms. Gunn or Mr. Roser with that. And also Ms. Blackshear, will you, do you mind Ms. Blackshear putting your, contact information in the chat. I know you shared it earlier. Of course. And so if any parents have any questions, and thank you, Ms. Scott, for putting that link in the chat for the HCCA applications. You're welcome. I also put in there the list of um, courses for uh, Middle Georgia. Um, I know she said the academic ones, but that way they can still, you know, see them. I was trying to, you know. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you all so much. I, again, on behalf of the district, we really do appreciate your attendance and your uh, participation in this Zoom informational session. And again, I'll make sure that I share this with the counselors so they can hopefully post it to their to their site. So in the future, if they do have an event at their school or 
parents want to know, they will certainly have a great reference to use with this, with this information. So again, thank you all. And I hope y'all have a great, uh, a great night. Y'all take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, okay. you. thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you.